If you want to attract more high paying clients into your coaching business, then there's only one content asset your business actually needs. How do I know? Because what I'm about to share with you allowed me to build Healthpreneur from zero to more than seven figures in seven weeks. No social media presence, no YouTube channel at the time, no podcast, nothing. This one content asset allowed us to go from nothing to more than a million dollars in seven weeks and it's helped our clients do more than $217 million collectively in their businesses. Want to know what it is? Then stick with me right to the end of this video because I'm going to show you how this one content asset can transform your business and I'm going to show you our six step teach to sell framework toward the end of this video, breaking down step by step how to execute this in your business. So you might be wondering, okay Yuri, well what is this one content asset? Well here it is. It's called an evergreen webinar. And before we go any further, and if you've already said to yourself, I've done this stuff before, it's no, 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 no. Just stick with me for a few moments because there's a very big difference between having a webinar and having a webinar that's done $217 million for many other health professionals online. There might be a few nuances that could transform everything you're doing with your current business. So I'm gonna walk you through right here, six reasons why I believe a webinar, specifically an evergreen automated webinar, not something you're doing live every single week, is a must for any business selling high ticket coaching online. So number one is it makes it harder for people to get on your calendar. If you're a busy professional, health professional specifically, you're probably already busy enough as it is. Burnout is a major problem and you don't wanna waste time speaking with people who just aren't qualified or even know what you do. So by having an evergreen webinar that filters out all those people that are not a good fit for you, educates and primes the right people to speak with you, you only end up with the right people or more of the right people on your calendar instead of wasting your time with just anyone who can book a call by clicking a button on your website at will. Number two is that it filters out those who are not committed. Yuri, I don't have time to watch a 45 minute presentation. My answer is goodbye. You're not serious enough about losing weight. You're not serious about transforming your business, but you are serious enough about watching that three hour movie on Netflix. Number three is it demonstrates your philosophy better than anything else. Here's the thing, you could post endlessly on social media, right? And I believe marketing is about showing your philosophy and your opinions or sharing those more than what you know. It's really important and our most successful clients are very, very opinionated and they stand behind what they believe unapologetically, as do I. There is no better place to share what your belief system is than in a, an audio presentation like a webinar. Like speaking from stage is massively powerful because people are not just reading stuff or they're not seeing a 45 second reel on Instagram. They're digesting a 30 to 60 minute presentation with your conviction and they're fully buying into it or they're not. So it's an amazing opportunity to share your philosophy, your kind of worldview around a particular topic, to sort of repel the wrong people and attract the right people into the next step with you. Number four is it provides the most leverage in your marketing. You see, if you're tired of telling people or just talking about the same things over and over again and people asking the same questions, you're answering the same questions over and over again, the simplest thing is you get them to watch the webinar. So here's how this works in our world. Hey Yuri, how do you help your clients build their businesses online? Well, that's a great question. Watch this. And then it shows them exactly what we do, as opposed to, well, the first thing we do is this, and I have to explain this, and then this, and then this. It's a waste of time. And it's also a waste of time if you're doing sales calls or enrollment calls, and you've got people coming onto those calls asking you, how exactly do you do this thing? Wouldn't it be a lot easier if you had them watch something first that explained how you do what you do? So they're coming in pre-qualified, pre-sold, and all of a sudden now the enrollment call becomes a lot more of an <laughs> enjoyable discussion, as opposed to having you hard sell all the time. The fifth point here is that the better you market, the less you have to sell. So the actual enrollment conversations become a lot easier. Your conversion rate goes a lot higher, especially to people who've never heard of you. And this is a really important distinction. We talk to people all the time, they're like, yeah, my conversion rate's 80%. I'm like, cool. Friends and family aside, what's your conversion rate on the phone? Oh, it's, you know, I just warm people who already know, like, and trust me. I'm like, I get that. But for, for people who've never heard of you, which is most of the world, what's the likelihood they're going to say yes to working with you if they have no prior context about how you help people achieve a goal. It's going to be pretty darn low. So by having a webinar before your enrollment call, it actually makes the selling, quote unquote, on the call almost unnecessary because if the webinar does a good job, 
people come in and they're like, man, this makes a lot of sense, etc. It's the same reason why if someone watches 100 YouTube videos of mine, they're already sold, right? They're like, I like this guy, I like his tone, I like what he talks about. It's so much easier to have that enrollment conversation than someone who's never heard of me. And the same thing goes for you, right? I'm not saying you have to have a YouTube channel because it's a lot of work and it's gonna take a long time to see anything from it. All you have to do instead is have one great webinar and that can transform your business and your future relatively quickly. So once again, what I'm talking about here an evergreen webinar. What that means is it's a presentation, and I'll show you an example in a moment, that you record once. It's voice over text slides. It's not you on camera. It's not like this. Why? Because a lot of times when we're in an, an enrollment or a selling conversation, we want the message to be front and center. Right now, if you're watching this video and you're like, ah, ah where's the eyebrows? Why wasn't your hand here? What's, what's going on with the background? background? Why is there this blue sweater? Like there's all this stuff that we want to remove from the core message. So when we are in a conversion based piece of content, we want the message and the offer to be front and center, which is why we recommend having a butt ugly slide deck, white slides with black text and you speaking over them. And what that allows your presentation to do is it allows you to communicate and articulate your message your content and your offer in such a way where people are not distracted by anything else going on around that. It's one of the biggest mistakes I've seen is people trying to fancy up their webinars. It's like, don't do any of that stuff. Just record it. Don't get fancy you'll be surprised at how effective it is. But Yuri, don't people have a really short attention span these days? Like, you know, we have the, all these like Instagram reels and the YouTube shorts and the TikTok videos. They don't have time to watch a 60 minute webinar. That's true. If they don't give a shit about improving their situation. But here's one thing I can promise you. We will always make time for stuff that's a must, right? Just think about this. Like think about this logically. When was the last time you watched a two hour movie? Probably recently. Was it a priority? Probably was. Why was it priority? You probably needed two hours to escape some downtime, etc. We always make time for things that are a must in our lives. And the reason having a webinar is so powerful is that it removes everyone who is not committed to finding a solution and therefore spending a little bit of time toward learning about how that's going to happen. The challenge though is that why don't webinars, why don't some webinars convert? Well, it's the same reason that some Facebook ads don't convert. It's the same reason why some cars suck and some are amazing. The reason is that the devil's in the details. And I want to share three mistakes that I've noticed amongst thousands of clients that I've worked with over the years. Okay. So hopefully you can avoid these. And then I'm going to show you how to create a high converting webinar. Okay. So mistake number one, is giving away too much of the how. So what I want you to think about is show know-how, but know how. Get that? You want to show your know-how, you want to show that you have knowledge, but you don't necessarily have to give away the how-to information. If you think about this, is someone really going to take a 30 to 60 minute presentation, jot all these notes down, and then actually do something with it and transform their life? The answer is no. And it's actually a disservice to them to think otherwise. When I was first starting to do live workshops, when I started Healthpreneur many, many years ago, I had uh, someone attend the workshop and she had a webinar around sugar detoxing. And she said her webinar just wasn't converting. And I said, okay, cool, let's bring out your laptop and show me what you got. And I literally just kind of sifted through her slide deck. And within the space of about 30 seconds, I was like, I know why it's not converting. I said, see right here, here, and here, you're literally telling people exactly what to do. So what happens is we're scratching all the itches right there the webinar. So people leave the webinar, they're like, oh, amazing. It was so valuable. I got all this great insight. They leave and do shit, nothing. That's not helping them. That's actually disservicing them because now they're not going to move forward to possibly working with you. They think they're going to solve some stuff on their own and they're going to do nothing. So they're not actually getting help. So I want you to kind of reframe this thinking around if I don't give away a lot of the how, I'm not serving my audience. Second thing is robotic delivery. If there's one thing I can share with you about the webinar or presenting in general is how you say what you say is what you say. If you have robotic delivery that sounds like this, and today we're going to talk about this science study that showed this, and then this over here showed this. You're done. Number one, no one cares about the science. You don't have to be like, you know, Dr. Smarty Pants. Dumb it down. Like really, like really, really dumb it down. The most important thing though is, is really bringing conviction to how you're presenting your topic. Because you could literally, I mean, you could talk about whatever you want. It can make no logical sense. But if you got conviction behind it, people will be like, okay, it sounds like he knows what he's talking about. Now, I'm not saying make stuff up and present fluff. But if you have a good logical argument that you're presenting through your presentation and you're backing it up with conviction, you win. 
I was uh, speaking at an event a number of years ago and I was going up on stage, uh, unfortunately, after the previous person was on stage talking about how the best way to build a business online is, you know, have all these funnels and you do all this stuff and then all this and this and this. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm about to blow all of that out of the water. And I was like, well, this is kind of awkward now. And I got up on stage and I said, hey guys, this has been an amazing event. And is it okay with you guys if I share what's worked really well for me over the past decade and a half? Everyone's like, yeah, okay, cool. And, and quite honestly, you only need four things. And I know it's gonna kind of go against a little bit of some of what other people have said here, but there's four things and one simple pipeline. That's all you need to build a multiple million dollar business online. Is that cool? Here's the cool thing. I, I presented my webinar from stage, right? Like, you know, people talk about the signature talk. This is your signature talk. I've, I've delivered my webinar at every event that I've spoken at over the past five years. It's the same presentation I give from stage. It's my webinar that is running 24 seven online. But here's the cool thing at this particular event presented my webinar. And it's cool because like when you're doing a, a, a webinar online, like you don't recognize how people are responding to it. But after I got off stage, I had people lined up, shaking my hand, giving me hugs because they're like, thank you so much. You've just simplified this world of complexity of building a business online. Like, what's the next step? Like, if you can see what's happening on the other side of the screen when people are watching your webinar, that's the response you want. Now, yes, there are people that will tune out totally fine, but you're looking for the people who watch all the way to the end who are like, literally like, oh my God, where has this been my whole life? And it's not going to be everyone, but that's the purpose of the webinar. It's not just a funnel. It's not part of a funnel. It's a filter. It's removing the wrong people and it's attracting only the right people forward. But again, how you present that. You have to have conviction. You have to believe in what you're talking about. If it's robotic and monotone, you're going to lose people. So robotic delivery is the second big mistake I see with webinars. The third one, and it's hard to say that this is the most important, but it's big, is there's nothing new or contrarian that's presented. The human brain is wired for novelty. Like we, we are obsessed with something new because new means maybe this is the thing. Maybe this is the thing that's going to work because everything else I've done in the past hasn't. New equals hope, and hope is a very, very powerful emotion. So if you have no big idea, which means if you have nothing new, a new way of looking at this that is getting someone to think like, huh, that's interesting, then it's not gonna work. Like I'll give you an example. So in my previous company, we had a webinar about energy and fatigue. And the big idea was this, low energy is a warning sign that something far more dangerous is brewing inside your body. That's a big idea. And how do I know that? Because that was me for most of my life. And then I lost my hair when I was 17 to an autoimmune condition. And I made the connection in my journey to think like, ah, oh, if I was sleeping all the time and my body was exhausted, then I developed an autoimmune condition could they be related? And eventually, uh, for me at least, they were. And that became the big idea that sold people on the fact that if you're tired, it's not normal, okay? So that gets people to like pay attention. The second piece with novelty is your logical arguments and the content you share in the webinar need to support the big idea. And they too need to be somewhat new novel contrarian. So if you say, if you wanna have more energy, just stop drinking coffee, get more sleep and uh, eat more vegetables, well, it's like, we've all heard that stuff. Although it's true and it works, you have to put new wrapping paper on this. You really wanna be thinking about how can we present this in such a way that's somewhat novel and unique. For instance, uh, one of the ideas in that particular webinar was essentially, if your blood is sluggish, you will be too. It's like, what the f does that mean? So now I'm like, if your blood is sluggish, you will be too. I'm talking about if the blood is not moving properly, you're not getting oxygen to the cells, da, 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 da. how does that happen? It's because of this, this, and this. This takes time to get good at. And this is why it's important to work with people or a mentor or whatever that's, that knows what they're doing because it's not good enough to know your stuff. You have to know how to put wrapping paper around it. If you want people to eat broccoli, it's a lot easier if you wrap it in bacon, right? the same idea here. It's not, we're not reinventing the content. We're repackaging it in such a way that people pay attention to it. So when you have no way of presenting your content in such a way that's new or a little bit contrarian, what happens is people are like, oh, I've seen this before, or this and whatever, you know, and they move on. They don't opt in. They don't watch it. They don't pay attention. And attention is the most important currency that we're all playing with. You have to grab people's attention and hold it. So those are three big mistakes. Got it? Okay, so now that we know what not to do, let's look at three things to do to create a higher converting webinar. And again, just in a moment, I'm gonna walk you through our six-step framework so you're gonna see exactly how this all maps out. So number one, 
is a high converting webinar should actually feel like a documentary. So it sells the what and the why, but not the how. And I wanna give you an example. So one of the documentaries that comes to mind for me is the movie, The Game Changers, which was a documentary about eating more plant-based food as it pertains to improving health and performance. Now, people say like, hey Yuri, well you just hold your horses there before you go vegan. Remember that the producers of that documentary were vegan athletes. And I'm like, and that's the point. They have an agenda that they want to put out into the world. What's wrong with that? Don't we all? And that's what a good webinar does. Because when I finished watching the documentary, what I was thinking is meant, maybe I should go vegetarian again. But what was interesting about the documentary is it didn't tell me a single thing about how to do that. There was no recipes. There was no, here's how to make a green smoothie. All it talked about was, well, we're gonna start the day with the green juice and here's what happens to our blood and here's what happens to performance and sleep. All I was getting sold on and all the viewers getting sold on is here's what we're doing and here's the benefits, benefits, the why, the why, the why, the benefits. And we're getting new belief patterns. We're breaking beliefs, we're confirming new ones and we're getting sold on a particular way of achieving an outcome. Now, there's probably other movies out there, other documentaries that have a very different point of view on the same topic. And the goal is that your information is not objectively true, right? Because is there an objective truth? Maybe. I mean, is vegetarianism or veganism the right thing for everyone? Probably not. But the right people who are sold on that concept are gonna be like, what do I do next? Now, if that were a documentary that led to booking a call, I promise you they would have built a pretty big business on the back end of that. Number two is it needs to be delivered with passion, right? Like we talked about not being robotic. So I'm not gonna belabor this point, but how you deliver your webinar makes a huge difference. I just want you to think of speeches or, or talks that you've heard people deliver at some point in your life and really think back to what was one that really stands out for me. And just like ask yourself, what was it about that delivery? Was was it about the fact that the person was so passionate and convicted? Part of that, you know, might be the reason as opposed to someone who stood up on stage and you can't even remember their name because they were a friggin' robot, okay? And the third big thing to have a higher converting webinar is you need to introduce a new way of solving the problem. So in the context of selling a coaching program, your webinar's goal is not to sell your coaching program. Your webinar's goal is to sell the vehicle through which you help your clients achieve the result. So in our world, we call that a proprietary process. In the world of direct response marketing, they call it a unique mechanism. But essentially, the goal of the webinar is to sell people on the system, the vehicle, the methodology through which they're gonna go from here to where they wanna be. So in our masterclass, the perfect pipeline, the whole purpose of the webinar is to sell you or whoever's watching it on why the perfect client pipeline, our four-step business model for getting clients like clockwork is just a smarter way to build a business. That's it. So it basically positions that against what everyone else does, which is posting online all day, posting videos like this on YouTube all day, right? Although I love doing this, it doesn't produce much business at this point in time, which is fine because I'm doing this for the future. It's all good. But if I had to, to, to pay the bills with these videos, I don't think I'd be here anymore. So. Anyways, what we're trying to do here is we're just saying, take what you do, extract it into a three or four step process and give it a name so that it seems interesting. Right? For us, the perfect client pipeline, that's the name of our proprietary process. It's more or less a webinar funnel. But if I just said it's a webinar funnel, then it's like, well, it's not as sexy. The perfect client pipeline implies there's a benefit and outcome that you want. I want a pipeline of perfect clients. And that's a set, like exactly what it does. So the goal of the webinar is to sell your system, not your coaching program. At the end of the webinar, it's like, listen, like if you like this, if it makes sense, if you wanna talk about how we can install this in your business, book a call. In your case, it might be like, hey, if this is making sense, you wanna see how this could work in your life, book a call, we could talk about if this is a good fit or not. So that's the purpose of the webinar. It's not to teach the how, it's to introduce a new way of solving a problem that they haven't been able to solve yet. Okay, so I'm at the computer and I'm gonna walk you through our framework. It's our, we call this the teach to sell process. So the webinar is built, at least in our world, on a very simple six step framework and we call it teach to sell because the goal of this is to teach in order to sell, not teach for the sake of teaching and everyone's like, bye, have a nice life, never talk to you again. So let me walk you through what this looks like. So first and foremost, we have step one in the webinar. So as you're building out your slide deck, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going 
going to introduce the topic at hand and we're going to confirm that they're in the right place. So you're here if whatever you might be, you know, if you're dealing with this, this or this, you're in the right place. If this is you, whatever. So right away, we're just confirming with them that this is the right thing for them to keep watching. The second step is bond and break. And this is where you introduce a lot more empathy in your story and you start breaking some beliefs. So you're not going to spend a tremendous amount of time talking about yourself ever in general, your story is very powerful and something that you, you definitely do not want to dismiss. You also don't want to spend a tremendous amount of time only talking about yourself, but people need to know that you've been in their shoes. And by sharing a bit of your story, you start to empathize with what they're going through. And then you start to break some of the patterns or beliefs that they might have about why they haven't been able to achieve what they want to achieve. Step three, is why you so here is just a really quick recap of like why you should listen to me listen like i was if you resonate with that stuff i completely get it i was exactly in that place actually i was far worse i was you know living in a car fifty five thousand dollars in debt i actually wasn't living in a car but i was fifty five thousand dollars in debt lived on poverty line income for a number of years and you know i did all this stuff and nothing worked you want to share your story in the context of how it serves the conversation the presentation if i'm doing a, a webinar on health i'm not going to share my financial journey if i'm doing a, our master class on for instance, the perfect client pipeline, I'm not sharing my health journey, but I do touch on it because we work with health professionals. So I, I you know, I'll talk about really quickly my journey. I was like, you know, I spent three years in poverty line income. I, I was struggling like no one's business. The reason I got into this in the first place, because I lost my hair when I was 17 years old to an autoimmune condition. And that really propelled me in this you know world of health. And so I, I, I kind of drop it in there, but it's, it's just like planted. The purpose of the story is for in the context of this presentation for them to relate to you as it pertains to what it is we're talking about. Get it? But you have to establish credibility and authority here because everyone's going to think of like, why should I listen to you? Like, who are you, right? Like, why should I even bother? So whatever you have here, I've been on Dr. Oz. I'm a New York Times bestselling author. I've helped, you know, hundreds of thousands of people. I've built several businesses and multiple seven and eight figures. I'm going to use all of that. And if you don't have that stuff, that's fine. You use whatever you have. Step four is you introduce the real problem and install new beliefs. And essentially the real problem is why what you're doing isn't working. So for instance, like in our master class, the real problem is the reason you can't get clients and build your business online is because you either don't understand or are not applying the five laws of client attraction. So what are the five laws of client attraction? Right? There's a lot of different ways you can position this from a health perspective. But as an example from, you know, if you're someone who helps women lose weights, the real problem is that it's not that you have to eat less and move more. The real problem is that you have a metabolic switch that is turned off. Well, what is that metabolic switch? And unless you learn about what it is and turn it back on, nothing you do is really gonna make a difference. So you can see how the real problem here is, is very closely tied in with this unique big idea that positions the rest of the webinar in terms of its content as like, well, I gotta find out what this is all about. So the real problem is that kind of statement. And then you're installing new beliefs. And these new beliefs are, think of them as your content pillars, right? So discovery one, discovery two, discovery three, they're, they're essentially presented as discoveries. They can be secrets, however, you want to present them but they should be presented in such a way that is a little bit unique as i mentioned earlier right so like if your blood is sluggish you will be too stuff like that so like in our in our, in our perfect client pipeline although this is not sexy it's it's real it's like everyone wants a specialist no one wants a generalist so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to sell the idea that if you want to attract high paying clients and build a successful business online you can't be a generalist like it's just not going to happen what i'm about to share with you here is where really really good presentations start to really like go above and beyond everything else. Because if you can think from two perspectives, if you can think from your perspective, but also think from the person watching this as perspective. And if you, if you can create your presentation from both those lenses, you win. And when you win, they win. So for instance, the prospects at this point, when you're introducing new ideas, when you're saying drinking water is terrible, going to bed early is the worst thing you could ever do. You're essentially breaking beliefs that people have. Working out seven days a week is the worst thing you can do for your health. Like what? Or lifting heavy weights is the most important thing you can do if you wanna burn fat, especially if you're a woman. Those are gonna be breaking some beliefs and installing new beliefs, which means you have to back up your claims. At this point of the webinar, you're gonna be thinking and presenting like a lawyer. You're presenting your case. You're not a marketer anymore. Now you're thinking of logically, how do I make the most logical argument that becomes irrefutable. That's essentially what we're doing here. 
So the first part is really about kind of empathy and emotion, et cetera. Now we get into a very, very logical content, which is like, here's why this is wrong. Here's why this makes more sense. Proof, 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 proof to the point where the person is like, okay. Because here's what's happening. The more you kind of move down these four, the four prospects, if you will, I call them the four prospects in their mindsets, but you have to be able to address each of these four because everyone's gonna fall into one of these four categories. So the person who's saying, I've seen this before, I'm out. You have to think of if that person, who is that person and how do I present my content in such a way that I neutralize that? Or the skeptical person, like you're full of shit, show me the proof. How do I back up everything I'm saying so that they can't even make that argument? Number three, the person's like, that's interesting tell me more. That's a pretty easy one. And the fourth prospect is I felt the same way. I knew there was something going on. You just confirmed that for me. Thank you. And this last one here is what I call confirming suspicions. And this is very powerful when you can either break beliefs or confirm suspicions. So that's essentially what we're doing in the webinar. Okay. And that's what you're doing through the content. So that's why we're making a claim. We're basically, we're making a statement. That's what essentially what a claim is. And we're backing it up with proof, claim, proof, claim, proof. We back it up with social proof, client testimonials, scientific studies, very gingerly and very like easy to understand and any kind of logical proof, okay? Once you've done this, the prospect is then thinking to themselves, okay, so what's what's your better way? Like if you've said all this stuff, like what, do I, what am I supposed to do? Or they're gonna say, really, really? Show me the proof that this actually works. And that's where you introduce your proprietary process, which is your specific vehicle or your system for helping your clients achieve results. So this is essentially what to do instead. In our masterclass and our webinar, some of the discoveries around like organic content's a waste of time, you know, social media, like it's okay, but it, you know, like it's a lot of grind. So I'm kind of positioning it against like some of this stuff. I'm saying you have to be a specialist, you know, premium pricing is a good idea. And so I'm building all of these things that tie into the core philosophy of what we want our clients to buy into. And then we say, listen, if this is making sense and you want to see exactly what we do with our clients that helps them achieve results way faster, this is what it is. And then I essentially walk through the perfect client pipeline. Here are the four steps. Here's this, here's this, here's this. And you might say, okay, you're, you're showing some of the how, which I am. But if I talk about Facebook ads as the first step, predictable prospecting, we run it on Facebook and Instagram. Am I really going to get into our whole reverse scaling method and our six step pruning process for turning off ads when they're out of KPI on exactly how much to spend and how to turn that into positive ROI? No way, right? Like I'm just skimming the surface but I am hinting at the fact that you have clarity over this process, but I'm not giving you enough because I don't have enough time to show you how to do it properly. But it's enough where the person's like, huh, this makes sense, let's learn more. Step five, once you've presented your argument, you're gonna come back to the emotional side of things and you're gonna stretch the gap. So it's like, you're here now and everything we've talked about is just not working. Let's just be honest. You wanna be over here, but you're not, like the bridge is broken. You're just not sure how to get there. You want these outcomes, right now this sucks. So we're stretching the gap because because if there's no gap, there's no change. And then finally, the right people are like, okay, I'm sold, what do I do next? Step six is we solve and close. The context of the coaching business, we're essentially offering the next step, which is to book a call. It's like, if this is making sense for you and you want this, you want this, you want this without all this other stuff, then the next step is to book a call. Now, before you do so, I wanna be very clear about who this is not for. And this is a very important piece of the webinar. Who this is not for and who it is for. This is massively important. If you want the right people on the call, you have to be very articulate about who it's not for. This is not for you if you can't scrape two pennies together. This is not for you if you're living on disability. This is not for you if you think that you have no ownership over your own health improvements. Like whatever the things are that are very important, like the, the non-negotiables, you have to lay those out crystal clearly because if you don't, and even if you do sometimes, you'll get the wrong people on the phone. But like, yeah, like I love your presentation. I want to talk about like whatever. You want to be very clear here with people. Listen, this call is free and there's two reasons why. Number one, we don't know each other. It's the best way I can actually add some value to your life uh, before asking for anything in return. I just think that's normal. And second, I know that a percentage of people I speak with are going to want my help to implement this and actually get results faster. If that's you, awesome. If not, totally fine. You'll have more clarity, whatever. 
So you have to let people know that there is the opportunity for the next steps of possibly working together, but you also have to reduce that risk because you don't want people thinking this is a high pressure sales call because they're not gonna book a call if that's the case. So you have to balance those two forces of like, here's the intention. If like, if you want my help, I'm happy to talk about what that looks like. But at the same time, this is not a free pick my brain session, okay? And if you can navigate those two, which you obviously can with the right type of guidance, it makes all the difference. So that's the six step framework. We call it teach the sell. Obviously there's a you know, nuance within all this stuff. Like with our clients, we give them the step-by-step -step slide deck, exactly what to say on every single slide. And it's just like, put your content in here and record it. So there we go. So we have now talked about why a webinar is massively important for your business. Some of the mistakes I see, some of the, the, the three things that are important for having a higher converting webinar. Again, it's the only piece of content you need for your business, to be honest. So Hopefully this has been useful for you. If it has been, let me know what you've liked most about this in the comments below. And now that we've talked about this amazing reservoir that's going to move people into the next stage to possibly working with you, the next question might be, well, how do I get people there in the first place? Good question. Check out the next video. I'm gonna walk you through how to get more clients. Regardless if you have a nutrition business, online health business, whatever, watch the next video. I'm gonna walk you through my 3M model to show you how to get more clients instead of just being one of another million types of coaches online. So thanks for watching. I appreciate your attention. I know this is a little bit longer, but hopefully you found this valuable. I'll see you in the next video. You rock.